Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan Battle video. So, today we are going to be going over the details for a bunch of upcoming Extreme Z Awakenings for Global that I realized I haven't covered on the channel yet. Specifically, I'm talking about the 5 members of the Free to Play Team Bardock, the Int Fasha, and the AGL Borgos who are already out, as well as the Tektora and Fizz Trugesh who are going to be dropping in a few days from now, and also the STR Bardock, which is coming out about a week after the Tora and Shugesh. And finally, the Super Strike Int Andrew 16 is going to be getting his own Extreme Z Awakening very, very soon. So like I said, in this video, we're going to be breaking down all of their EZA details to get you guys fully prepared for their release. So with that said, let's Jump right into it, starting with the members of Team Bardock, and even though, like I said, the Borgos and Fasha are already out, there might be some people that are a little bit behind and don't know exactly what they do, so I'll go over their details as well. If you guys already know what they do, then feel free to skip ahead about like two or three minutes. Okay, so um, why don't we just go over the EZA details for all these units, since I feel like that's what most people really care about. So for the Int Fasha, after the Extreme Z Awakening, her leader skill will be low class warrior category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 77%, or Int types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, super attack, greatly raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage and lowers attack and defense. And then her passive is attack and defense plus 150% and high chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow key spheres when there is an ally whose name includes Bardock, Team Bardock excluded, on the team. All allies key plus 3, and Team Bardock category allies attack an event plus 30% within the same turn after evading an attack. So, Asha, I feel like, is quite solid as far as a free-to-play Extreme Z Awakening goes. The only thing I don't like about her is the fact that she only gets this support after she evades an attack, which means that you're not going to be getting the benefit of this support if she's in the third slot, right? Which is where I normally put my support units as floaters. So, um, yeah, not a huge fan of that part, but overall, still really, really solid. So. That is the Int Fasha. Moving on to the AGL Borgos, who once again is already out. Leader skill, low class warrior, category key plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 77%. Or AGL types, key plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 50%. Super attack, supreme damage, or sorry, uh, greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes supreme damage to enemy with a high chance of stunning the enemy. Passive attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional attack and defense plus 100% when facing only one enemy. Launches an additional super attack when facing two or more enemies. And high chance of performing a critical hit when your team has another Team Bardock category ally attacking in the same turn. So clearly, Orgos is a offensively oriented unit being able to do a really respectable amount of damage. Uh, whether you're facing one enemy or two or more, because if you're facing one, he's getting a lot of attack. If you're facing two, then he's getting multiple supers, right? And also the high chance to crit on a Team Bardock team is also great for his damage. Um, he's also getting the high chance to stun, so if you're doing like Super Battle Road, for example, that's going to help with reducing the amount of damage you're taking. And uh, he's also getting a good amount of defense, actually, with the 150 here and then the... 100% there. So, yeah, really good Extreme Z Awakening for the Borgos. There you go. Moving on to the Tektora, which is coming out in, it doesn't say it right here, but I believe about two to three days from now. After the EZ8, leader skill is low class warrior category key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 77%, or tech types key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 50%, super attack raises attack and defense, infinitely stacking. Causes supreme damage and greatly lowers defense. And then passive is attack and defense plus 150%. All allies keep plus 3. And attack and defense plus 30%. Team Bardock category allies 
chance of performing a critical hit plus 10%, recovers 15% HP whenever HP is 85% or less, if there are three or more low-class warrior category allies on the team. So, uh, Tora is clearly the support of this free-to-play team Bardock. He's giving you key plus 3, attack and defense plus 30%, he's giving you the additional crit chance, he's giving you the heal, and he's also arguably the best uh, long event unit because of the infinitely stacking attack and defense with every super, right? So I really like this Tora. He's also usable on teams that are not just Team Bardock. For example, um, Pure Saiyans, I mean of course he is going to be missing this part of his passive if you don't have three or more low-class warriors, but he's just an all-around good support that uh, can infinitely stack attack and defense, so you never go wrong with that. So that's the Tora, and now we have the Fizz Shugesh. Low-class warrior, category key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 77%, or Fizz type key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 50%. Super attack, Raises attack, sorry, uh, raises defense only, not attack, raises defense, and then greatly raises attack for one turn, causes supreme damage, passive is attack and defense plus 150%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 50%, when there is another team Bardock category ally attacking at the same turn, performs a critical hit when the target enemy is stunned, stuns the target enemy when the target enemy super attack is sealed, and then launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack when the target enemy is in attack or defense down status. So uh, one of those units that has like different abilities or does different things depending on the um, what's it called? The, depending on the debuff that's on the enemy, whether they're attack or defense down, or they're stunned or sealed. And uh, the only thing that's kind of unfortunate is that. He doesn't seal the enemy himself, unless I missed that, hold on. Um, he can't seal, right? Yeah, so he can't seal, he can stun, but the en enemy has to be uh, sealed first. So he does re rely on other units on your team to get the seal off first before he gets the stun and then the critical, right? So, um, a little bit of a wonky unit. If you will, I mean the 150% attack and defense and then the additional attack and defense plus 50% is still good. But in order to get the rest of this passive, you need to um, you know, have some other conditions, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not my favorite thing, <laughs> to be honest. So that is the Fizz uh, Shugesh. And uh, last but not least, for the free-to-play team Bardock units, we have the leader himself, SDR Bardock, leader skill is low class warrior, category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 77%, or SDR types, key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 50%, super attack, raises attack and defense for one turn, and causes supreme damage, and seals super attack, and passive is attack and defense plus 150%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% per key sphere obtained, chance of performing a critical hit plus 7% per rainbow key sphere uh, obtained, and then reduces damage received by 10% per team Bardock category ally on the team up to 50%. So as you can see, this guy has the highest potential for the most damage and also the best tanking as it should be, you know, since it is Bardock after all. And um, he also has great synergy with uh, the Fizz Shugesh since he is the one that can seal the enemy, and then uh, Shugesh can stun and also get his guaranteed criticals once the enemy is stunned. So um, yeah, these two work really well together, and uh, Bardock is just really, really solid. I mean, 150 off the bat, and then 20% attack and defense for every key sphere, getting more crit chance for every rainbow key sphere, and uh, that's good synergy with the Int Fasha, since Fasha can change rainbow key speeders, right? And he's also getting 50% damage reduction on a full team Bardock team, or at least 10% uh, damage reduction if he's the only team Bardock unit on the team, right? But yeah, 50% damage reduction is a lot on top of how much defense he's getting with his passive right here, so um, just a really good free-to-play unit, um, this SDR Bardock, I would say. So 
That is the last member of the free to play team Bardock. We should expect to see him to drop in about like 10 days or so. I don't know the exact time, but somewhere around there. All right. And lastly, we have the int Android 16 leader skill uh, after the easy yay. Int type to key plus three. HP attack and defense plus 77%. Super attack raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage and lowers attack. And passive is attack and defense plus 160% plus an additional defense plus 80% when facing two or less enemies. High chance of guarding all attacks when all allies... Did the music stop? Hold on. Uh, oh, we're fine. We're fine. Okay. Um... <laughs> High chance of guarding all attacks when all allies attacking in the same turn are Android slash Cell Saga characters. And uh, guard all attacks when facing three or more enemies reduces damage received by 60% when guard is activated. So basically, when he has his guard activated, he's not taking like any damage um, at all. And um, yeah, that is the Android 16. Definitely defensively focused as you might expect right a very good tank in the right situation and uh his damage should be okay don't expect much from him but defensively he's gonna be very very impressive so that is the int android 16 extremes the awakening and that does it for the uh six ezas that are coming to global or rather four EZAs as well as two that are already on global but um that's basically the video guys that's all I wanted to talk about I just wanted to make sure that you guys were fully aware of what these guys did and uh good luck in farming them let me know in the comments down below which one of these EZAs do you think is the most impressive do you think is the best um personally I too really like this Bardock I think he's probably the best of the team Bardock units at least although Although, this Tora is not to be slept on. I mean, infinitely stacking attack and defense, good support for all allies, regardless of category or type, and uh, like, you know, extreme or super, and uh, also some healing, uh, additional crit chance, um, just a really good support, man. Really solid support. I like this unit a lot, but uh, there you go, guys. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.